This state entered the Union in the midst of the Civil War, just over a year after the terrible battle at Gettysburg. Thus their motto, Battle Born. Greetings from Nevada, the 36th state to join the Union, which it did on Halloween, 1864. It has 2.5 million residents, making it the 35th most popular state. The common misperception is that everything is legal out here, that there's just, there's just gambling and alcohol and drugs and prostitution, and that's, uh, well, that's true. All of those are true. But uh, a common misconception is that the uh, buffets are free. They're not all free anymore. Cheap, very cheap, not free. Nevada has a lot more to offer than just cheap food. It's the only state with a museum entirely devoted to Liberace. There's one slot machine for every 10 residents. And in the sinful city of Las Vegas, there are more churches per capita than almost any other town in America. Of course, that includes wedding chapels. More of Nevada land is owned by the federal government than any other state, 84.5%. Much of it is inhospitable desert, where nearly a thousand nuclear weapons tests were once conducted. But the lack of private land hasn't cramped the state's independent spirit. They have a long, rugged pioneer history, uh, starting with the gold mining in the early days, the ranching. They control their destiny. They do what they feel is important. In Nevada, they do what they want to do when they want to do it, uh, uh, so much so that you can strap on a, a six-shooter and walk down the main street of Las Vegas, and it's legal. Nevada is a place of contrast and contradiction. It has one of the smallest populations, but it's also one of America's fastest-growing states. Its arid deserts have made it the driest state in the Union, but it also has more mountain ranges than anywhere else, including Alaska. Nevada actually means snow-capped in Spanish, but in English, most out-of-staters have trouble pronouncing its name. People mispronounce our state name all the time. You get the Nevada, Nevada. That is like potato or potato. <laughs> it's kind of like tomato and tomato. It is Nevada. <laughs> Nevada. Need proof? Check out the new specialty state license plate that actually shows the name with a phonetic spelling. Nevada is often called the Silver State, the perfect name for a place that's built on gambling money, over $10 billion in taxable income each year. But the Silver State was also built on gold mining. A lot of people don't realize, even Nevadans don't realize, that Nevada is the third largest gold producing region in the world behind South Africa, which is one, and Australia, which is two. Just about 10 million ounces of the precious metal were mined in Nevada in 2005, valued at more than $3 billion. So much of this state seems larger than life, like Hoover Dam. It took 21,000 men and five years to build, yet it came in two years ahead of schedule. At 726 feet, it's 171 feet taller than the Washington Monument in D.C. The dam is filled with 3.25 million cubic yards of concrete. That's enough to pave a standard two-lane highway from New York all the way to San Francisco. Despite Nevada's wide open and empty spaces, 95% of its population is crammed into just 19% of the state's territory. The areas that make up metropolitan Reno, Carson City and Las Vegas. Since the early 1990s, Greater Las Vegas has boomed. Suburbs have encroached on the surrounding desert, dotting the arid beige landscape with sprinkler-fed oases of green. The growth is staggering. A new home is built every nine hours. Sixty new streets are paved every month. The massive building boom that's accompanied the influx of newcomers even prompted the governor to suggest that the state bird should be changed to the construction crane. Nevada got its first growth spurt thanks to the largest silver deposit ever discovered, anywhere. Two Irish miners, Peter O'Reilly and Patrick McLaughlin, were prospecting on the slopes of Mount Davidson when they came upon traces of gold and silver. So they know they've hit something very important. Who comes out of the sagebrush? Henry Page Comstock. And he claims that that's his land. 
So these guys said, well, better to bring him on board and make him a partner than let him go spill the beans down at the saloons and then everybody's going to come over and take over the project. Well, the Comstock load put Nevada on the map, quite literally. It was producing so much wealth. By 1861, the federal government adopted Nevada as a territory, and only three years later, in 1864, Nevada became a state. During its prime production years, from 1861 to 1878, the Comstock load yielded over $400 million in silver and gold, the equivalent of $5 billion today. Thousands of prospectors poured into Nevada. Mining camps became centers of fabulous wealth. One young man who came seeking his fortune was an obscure writer from Missouri. Before it became known as Mark Twain, the very famous American author and humorist, uh, Sam Clements came to Nevada in 1862, and he was acting editor of the Virginia City Territorial Enterprise for a short period of time and got into a little uh, tiff with the other competing newspaper's editor, and it uh, turned out their words became very heated, and a duel was proposed. However, it was a new felony to participate in a duel, and under the threat of arrest, Mark Twain fled the Comstock for good. Nevada's mining towns were notorious for their drinking, gambling, and prostitution. Many Americans were scandalized by such sinful behavior, and in 1910, the state legislature finally banned gaming. Even though Nevada had outlawed gambling, the fact was that people were still gambling all the time and everywhere, but the state was cut out of the revenue because they couldn't tax it. And they said, we are going to legalize gambling and it can become part of the economy of the state. This created a major sensation in the United States to the point where Congress actually convened to determine whether or not they could revoke the statehood of Nevada. Efforts to punish Nevada for its wicked ways never got very far, and the gaming industry grew in popularity. In 1941, most of the action was in Reno, but very soon, Las Vegas would become the new hotspot with the construction of a place called El Rancho Vegas. It was the first casino resort with gambling, lodging, and entertainment all under one roof. El Rancho Vegas set the standard for every hotel casino that followed on the Vegas Strip. Bugsy Siegel used the same model to develop his Flamingo Hotel on the other side of the Strip. Bugsy Siegel showed the mobsters all throughout the country that they could come to Nevada, discontinue being criminals, and become legitimate businessmen as soon as they crossed the state line. Jake Friedman built the Sands in 1952. He was a gambler from Texas who had the bright idea to sell Frank Sinatra a few ownership points in the property. That gave Sinatra an interest in making the sand successful, and Sinatra performed in the famous Copa Room for 15 years after that with his buddies, Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin and Joey Bishop and all the rest of the Rat Pack. In less than 100 years, Las Vegas has gone from a fly speck on the map to a tourist destination that hosts 38 million visitors annually. With more hotel rooms than any city in the world, it would take one person 288 years to spend a night in each hotel room in Las Vegas. But there's one place in Nevada that you can't visit, because officially it doesn't exist. It's called Area 51. Area 51 is a super secret, highly classified air base about 60 miles north of Las Vegas. Rumor has it that the Air Force conducts secret experiments in large tunnels deeply buried below the surface. Area 51, it's a very well-kept secret. I have heard many stories about uh, UFOs being stored there. Uh, there's spy satellites, top secret facilities, black projects. You can only go so far towards it, then you have guards uh, telling you to turn around and go back. I don't think I want to know too much, because it's kind of scary. Strange aerial sightings are commonly reported in the area. UFO believers claim that the nearby town of Rachel, Nevada, is one of the most alien visited sites in the country. In 1996, state officials acknowledged the peculiarities. Route 375, which runs near Area 51, was designated the extraterrestrial highway, proving that Nevada has a little something for everybody. We have entertainment, we have food, 
we have hotels, and we have underground nuclear testing. It's really the only state that has everything.